To the woman who always feels like the bridesmaid and never the bride, and you often feel overlooked or that God has forgotten about you, then this video is for you. So sis, if you've ever had to smile through a friend's engagement, a wedding, a baby shower, and you've asked yourself, God, when will it be my turn? Then keep on watching. Hey loves, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lady V. If you're new here, sis, hey girl, hey. I pray that I say something in today's video that blesses and encourages you as you navigate love, life, and everything in between with style and grace. So today's video is especially for my girlies who are single out there and are feeling frustrated and are feeling overlooked and are questioning God about their singleness. They're tired of always being the bridesmaid and never the bride. Sis, I got you. I have had to navigate those feelings as well. And so I decided it would be good to create a video that exists and will encourage other women who are trying to keep the faith while being single. So that's what this video is about. Let's get to it. Wedding day. We are getting one of my great, great friends married. Look how beautiful this place is. So the ceremony will take place over here. That's where we will be with the bride. So beautiful. I do crew in the building. Put your name on it. <laughs> Put your name on it. <laughs> These are so cute. That's made duties. Let's go. Got my rope and I put it on. So let me first start by saying this. Sis, I want you to know that it is okay for you to feel what you feel in this season. It's okay to be sad in this season. It's okay to cry and admit that this season is hard. Listen, I have watched many a friend, many of a many a friend in my almost 37 years of life get married. And while I have been elated and extremely happy for all of them, there was still a small part of me that was sad for me and we that's something that we don't talk about enough how sometimes we can be happy for our friends and genuinely happy for our friends but still have a small part of us that still aches for the love that we desire we often feel guilty for having these emotions and when we start to suppress these emotions that is where things like bitterness can take root and so this is a safe space for us all to release those emotions. However, comma, we have to be careful not to fall down the comparison trap. And while it can be so easy for us to compare ourselves and our lives to that of our friends, we have to beware how comparison can become dangerous. And comparison can become dangerous when it causes you to question your own self-worth based off of somebody else's life, based off of somebody else's husband, based off of somebody else's relationship. I'll be real with y'all, and I shared this in last week's video while I was at the wedding. One of my friends told me like, bye, you're gonna be the last single girl standing. And her comment stung. And I know she didn't mean anything negative by it, but I was already battling like my own feelings. And so it was really hard to make sure that I didn't go down the comparison trap because I definitely found myself asking like, okay, what am I not doing right on this journey? What, what did they, what did my friends learn and understand about love and relationships that I didn't understand, you know? And so what I had to do, because y'all know when those thoughts come in, that gives space for the enemy to move and to cause us to question ourselves or to cause us to question God. And that is not what we are doing in this stage of our life. And so I had to recapture those thoughts immediately. And I had to remind myself that just because my timeline looks different, it doesn't make me any less worthy or any less deserving of love. And sis, I want to remind you of the same. You're not behind, you're not forgotten, and you're definitely not less than. You are still a queen, regardless if you have a king. Don't you ever forget it, okay?
version of my favorite memory of my roommate on there. I was gonna say the time that she got drunk and we had to take her to IHOP and she, she wouldn't eat that pancake. And we kept saying, Andy, you need to eat. I also want to talk about something else that we don't talk about enough, which are the changing friendship dynamics that occur when those friendships that you relied on start to shift as your friends get married. You know, the friends who used to be available for the last minute brunch date, the spontaneous trip or the late night heart to hearts are now so busy and tending to their own families that they're not so available anymore. And sometimes you're left feeling like you lost your friend, your crew, as well as the dream of being in a relationship. And that can honestly make the loneliness of singleness feel even heavier sometimes because the people and the friendships that used to be your go to now have other priorities. And so that's why I actually had to start praying specifically for friends who could meet me in this season. It doesn't mean that the friendships that you've known for years are no longer valuable. It just means that those friends are in a new chapter and that's okay. And it's also okay for you to pray for friends who are available and who can journey through your singleness together. So I'll share a personal story. Um, one of my good, good friends, and I did get her permission to share this story. Um, we were really close um, right after, well, in college, right after college and all the things. Um, but eventually she got married and I remember mourning the loss of the friendship. I was young. We both were young. And so... This was probably one of the first times that I had experienced a shift in friendship dynamic due to someone being married. And I was just like, oh, this feels weird. Like I'm trying to call you and, you know, continue to foster that relationship and you're not as available anymore. And it was hard for me at the time. I was really struggling because she was like one of my best friends. And so um, eventually we got to a space where we were able to talk about it. And unbeknownst to me, the changing dynamic impacted her as well because now she was trying to figure out how to be a wife, how to be a mother, and how to still show up as a friend while also still showing up for herself. Now, me at this ripe age of 37, I can totally understand that, and I have a way different perspective on changing friendship dynamics now than I did at like 20 something. How old were we when you got married? Because I know she'd be watching my videos. How old were we when you got married? I think we were like 30. I think we were roughly around 30. Um, and so, you know, but I didn't know all of that. So I share that with you all to let you know that just because the friendship dynamics change, it doesn't mean that that friend no longer values you or no longer loves you, right? It just means that they're in a new chapter and that's okay. Um, she and I have been able to uh, talk about it and we are still very, very good, great, and close friends today. In fact, we're probably closer than we have before because the conversations we be having now is just on a whole new level, and I'm so grateful for that. Here are the This is the bride. Okay. is perfect and even though things may not be unfolding in their life right now in the way that they think it should that you have a master plan in the background for their love story god I so one thing i've had to learn to do is to see my singleness not as a punishment but actually as a gift it is a gift that god has given me to work on myself to love myself to grow closer to him to be selfish to do all the things that I want to do in this season, to travel the world, to start this YouTube channel, to do any and everything that I want to do. This is your time to do all the things that will help you grow into the person that you want to be for yourself first and then for your future partner, right? And so use this time to develop the qualities that will attract the type of relationship that you desire. Um, use this time to build your confidence, to work on some new skills. I know for me right now, something that I'm doing y'all is cooking more. Now don't 
think that I'm a bad cook, okay? I do, I do okay, okay? But I really want to expand my cooking skills and add some meals to my repertoire because I want to cook for my man, my man, my man when God finally sends him, right? I want my man to be like, oh, my wife can throw down in the kitchen. <laughs> so I tried to find a new recipe on like, TikTok or social media, even on YouTube. Um, I try to find new recipes um, and try to cook a new one every week. So future husband, if you are watching, okay, your girl is over here preparing for you and you better like my food. <laughs> Let me leave you with this. I think the hardest part of this whole process is trusting God through it all, trusting God no matter what. And it can be so tempting to want to rush through the process to settle for the wrong relationships or to even lower your standards for fear of being single forever but sis what we are not doing okay is settling we're not settling over here you're not settling over there that's what we're not doing God's promise to you is that he has good plans for you even if those plans don't look like what you think they should I'm reminded of the scripture Jeremiah 29 11 which says um, for I know the plans that I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future so sis when you are going through the ups and downs of singleness and the frustrations of feeling overlooked and forgotten by God hold on to this scripture hold on to this verse it is in these moments that you really need to lean into God and pray through it and let me tell you the prayers don't have to be pretty in fact sis I encourage you to go to God and tell him how you really feel respectfully of course but tell him how you really feel my prayer life with the Lord is as though he is sitting right here with me I'd be like Lord I don't understand like make it make sense this does not I do not understand this, I am frustrated, I am sad, I am hurt, but please help me to continue to trust you no matter what. You know, so your prayers don't have to look pretty at all. You do not, God does not need us to come to him with our pretty and polished selves. He wants us to come to him authentically because that is when he can work. That is when he can restore you. And so a couple of things that you can pray for in this season is to pray for restoration of your hope and your faith. I know, especially if you are getting on up in age like me, and you've seen a lot of people get married, it can cause your own hope and faith to dwindle. And it can be easy to feel like God has forgotten about you when you see so many people around you getting the things that you also desire, right? And so I want to encourage you to pray for God to restore your hope and faith. Y'all know at the beginning of this year, I realized that I had lost hope, right? And so I had to go on a journey of praying through that hope. And if you need some encouragement in that, you can check out some of my earlier videos. Another thing that I would tell you, like a practical tip that you can do is you got to let go of your ego and your timeline, girl. Okay. This whole notion that you got to be married by 30 with two kids, a white picket fence and all the things you, mm, sis time to let go of the timeline okay and I'm not saying that that means you don't still have a desire or an aspiration for these things but you have to let go of your timeline because God's timing is not the same as ours and I know for me I hit that 30 year mark and I had that like oh snap I'm still single I ain't got no kids fortunately for me my family is very supportive of my singleness I got some I got some good aunties who are like girl stay single as long as you can they, they marry some of my uncles and um I think I think my uncles took them through some things but it's okay uh, <laughs> so their advice to me was like stay single for as long as you can so I never had that pressure from my family but I do realize that we do put a lot of pressure on ourselves and I know especially as I'm getting older and that little biological clock is ticking allegedly um there has been some pressure right that I've had to put or that I've put on myself that I've had to learn to let go of because at the end of the day what is meant for us won't miss us and it will happen in God's perfect timing so you have to let go of where you thought your life would be right now and still have hope that a beautiful love story will exist even if it's not on the timeline that you expected <laughs>
you have been watching this video and you are feeling tired, overlooked, and frustrated with God, then I just want to remind you of something. God's timing is perfect and what is meant for you will not pass you by. And so I encourage you to continue to trust God to write your love story. In fact, I want us to repeat this affirmation together before we end our time here today. Let's end with this. My time is coming. I am enough as I am today. I trust God's perfect timing for my life. I trust him to write my love story. I pray that that keeps you all encouraged. Um, thank y'all so much for watching today's video. I'm going to go ahead and put this down. Um, if anything, if I said anything that resonated with you all, leave me a comment below. Y'all, this is a safe space, okay? So there is no shame. There is no judgment. I think I got a comment on last week's video where someone said, you know, I'm tired of going and looking at people like single women on YouTube and all they're talking about is the positive side of singleness. Um, I want people to talk about the real. Well, I hope y'all have heard some realness on today because I know y'all, like I try to be positive for the most part, but I know that sometimes we got moments on this journey where we are just not feeling positive. And so I hope this video will be the resource that you can come back to um, when you're having moments and you're feeling down. I know it's going to be a video that I come back to myself. So anyways, y'all make sure you leave me a comment below, like this video, subscribe to my channel if you're new here. Um, and yeah, y'all pick up your crown, fix your crown. Okay. You got this, sis. You got this and God's got you. That is all that I have for this week and I'll see y'all next week. Bye. Right, so I just wanted to add in a prayer for everybody who is watching this video. Let me pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, God, first God, thank you. Thank you for this time with my sisters on today, God, as they are watching this video, God, I pray that you restore their hope, God, and their faith in you, God. I pray that you help them to remember, God, that your timeline is perfect. And even though things may not be unfolding in their life right now in the way that they think it should, that you have a master plan in the background for their love story, God. I pray that you encourage them on this journey, God. I pray that you show them just how beautiful they are to you, just how beautiful they are, even without the title of wife or girlfriend. God, I pray that you remind them how valuable they are to you and to your kingdom, that they are daughters of the king, God. And because of that, you are working everything out for their good and your glory, God. I pray against any negative and mental attacks from the enemy right now in the name of Jesus, any attacks that will cause them to doubt their own self-worth, God, that will cause them to settle for unhealthy relationships, God, that will cause them to lower their standards when you we know that they deserve your absolute best in a partner, God. And on this journey, God, I pray that as they continue to evolve into the women that you have called them to be, that they start to find peace and contentment and happiness and joy in this season, God. You know, I always say, that um, the grass is greener where you water it, God. So I pray that you help to give them the tools to start to water their singleness and thrive, God. Show them their purpose, God. Show them things that will continue to help them evolve into the women you have called them to be, God. And if they are lacking in friendships, God, if they are struggling with loneliness, I pray that you bring friendships and community into their life that will encourage them, that will uplift them, that will go to the brunch dates, that will travel the world, that will will pour into them right now in the name of Jesus. And before I end this prayer, God, even though we are learning to be content in our singleness, God, we still have a desire for love, God. We still have a desire for marriage. And so I pray, God, that you remember my sisters, God, that you remember every woman who is watching this video, God. You know their heart's desires. And I pray that you bring them in alignment with that person that you have especially crafted for them, God. We are believing you right now in the name of Jesus that our love stories will be the most beautiful love stories far beyond what we could have ever imagined or thought. And we lift all of this up to you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all. I hope you all are encouraged.